Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Darren Franich, and I'm a writer for Entertainment Weekly. I'm very excited to be the... That's... Thank you. That's very kind of you, uh, and not at all necessary. Um, you all just watched the 44th episode of Vikings, uh, titled All His Angels. Uh, it's my great pleasure to bring on a couple of guys who are pretty central to the Vikings experience, and were very central to that episode. Uh, first of all, I want to welcome the man who wrote all 44 episodes up to here, and many more episodes yet to come. Please welcome Michael Hurst, writer of Vikings. <laughs> and uh, joining him on stage is a man who needs no introduction over the course of 44 episodes. He was a farmer, he was a warrior, a conqueror, an earl, a king, a fallen icon, and ultimately a guy in a snake pit. Uh, please welcome, please welcome King Ragnar Lothbrok himself, Travis Fimmel. Uh, Travis, uh, everybody here just experienced uh, your final episode on Vikings. Very emotional, very dramatic. Uh, you know, after so long on the show, your last scene, uh, you were held aloft in a cage, uh, which I have to imagine was not that comfortable. Uh, what, was, what was it like uh, filming that scene? There was a lot of emotional intensity. What was it like kind of on the set that day? Um, good day, anyway, everybody. <laughs> All right. uh, it was one of the... Uh Normal days in Ireland. <laughs> very <It's> rainy. <laughs> yeah. Very rainy and very cold. But uh, it was great. We, I had such a great arc on the show. You know, I started at whatever age I looked at yeah, at the start. I'm you not sure. You look like a boy when you start. <laughs> 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 and, and anyway, I got to span an age until whatever age I looked at. Yeah, and it was about 30 years or something. So um, as an actor, it's, a, uh, it's such a great opportunity. And um, I don't think I'll ever get that on another show or film or anything. And uh, I know it really felt right to die that day. Um, <laughs> it felt the right time, you know. I accomplished what I was going to accomplish. And the, the kids are coming up and doing amazing things. And uh, it just felt, it felt really right for the show. And you've kind of said before, I know, um, you know, with Ragnar, we went on such a journey with him, saw him as a young man, as you said, saw him as an older man. You've kind of said you kind of preferred playing some of the later seasons when, I mean, he, he had kind of a spiral towards the end there, I think it's fair to say. Was that kind of more, more interesting to play or, you know, you know, cool to play that side of the character? Yeah, it's a, um, I feel like I had a lot more obstacles when I was older and, and Michael gave me a great, great opportunity to... Um, to be more, um, uh, to have more, uh, what's it when you, uh, uh, I make more mistakes. I'm, I'm you made a lot of mistakes. Yeah, a lot of bad, <laughs> bad choices. The only bad thing was you got to sit in makeup for an extra hour and a half. <laughs> but um, yeah, he's a lot more flawed, my character, by the end, definitely. And, and his kids are grown up and you could, uh, there's a lot more understanding between the kids instead of talking to a a little kid that you can't really have a normal scene with. <laughs> Especially little Irish kids, they're funny. <laughs> Michael, uh, talk a little bit about, um, you know, Ragnar's death scene. In some ways, the show had been leading up to this for so long, and, you know, I have to imagine that you kind of knew at some point that this scene would occur, but uh, talk a little bit about the staging of this scene. What kind of led you to stage it in this kind of dramatic fashion with him sort of speaking down to all the assembled, uh, you know, to all his assembled enemies, really? Um, well, could I say, actually, that even thinking about it now makes me feel very emotional. Um, obviously, I knew that Ragnar was going to die at, at, at some point, although in the initial outline for the show, he actually died at the end of season one. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, you know, in fact, um, once the show was underway, um, that was never going to happen. And uh, Travis was just an, an amazing uh, uh, character and person and, and, and lived that role 
and was always creative, always creative. Um, uh, I, I was, you know, we created the character together. Uh, you know, it's not just that we spent a long time talking to each other about the character and, and you know, and he would put pressure on, on, on the, the dialogue or the lines or, or the scene or whatever, uh, which was a good thing because then I had to defend what I'd written or I could, you know, I could be persuaded that I was wrong or, or we, we could change it. But we lived that character. A bottle of wine always persuaded you pretty easily. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it helped. <laughs> It helped. Um, I always knew that, I, you know, Ragnar was going to die in a snake pit uh, because that was the historical record. And as far as possible in this show, we are as authentic as we can be and as close to the historical record. So there was, I know there's a lot of speculation on social media about how it was going to happen. It was always going to happen that way. And of course, you want, you want to maximize the drama. I mean, the, uh, the cage and, and, and everything. Um, helped to do that, as did the Irish weather. Um, uh, but, but also, you know, the closer we got to shooting that scene, the closer we got to Ragnar's death, I think both, both Travis and I got kind of very wound up uh, about it. Um, you know, because you're, you're dealing with the, the death of someone who's <laughs> obviously very close to you, who, who means a lot to you. It's, it's, a, it's a real experience. It's a real thing. And um, it was difficult for, for Travis, in some ways, to say those final lines because it's like a, a, a speech. And one of the things that we discussed all the way through the, the show... I hate speeches. That he hates... <laughs> Speeches, but it just so happens that this is one of the few things that we know or we think we know that the historical Ragnar actually said. And uh, Travis uh, was fighting against uh, some of his instincts, but he was also going with his instincts. And that kind of struggle that was manifest, that was visible, that was there in this lonely figure in a cage in the in the rain made the performance even more powerful. I mean, it was a palpably powerful performance. And we've shot a, a scene recently, Travis, of, of where um, we, to some extent, recreated it because Lagatha goes and witnesses it herself. So you weren't there, but your voice was there. Yeah, I don't get the scripts anymore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But I'm telling you, just hearing your voice in that same place, in that same glade in the woods in Ireland, was absolutely chilling for all of us who'd been there, what was it, a year before when you died. And, I, I, you know, I didn't sleep that night after we shot that. It was the death in the family. It was an incredibly powerful. And it was, but it was the perfect way to end that storyline. It sounds like the, the filming of it was kind of as intense as the emotion of it was. I mean, like, Travis, I know you, you were saying that initially you were kind of reticent about the speech. Um, you know, what's your kind of interpretation of what Ragnar is saying there? I mean, he obviously doesn't believe some of it, or, or even all of it, maybe. Is he just sort of, what, you know, how, how did you kind of come around to giving that speech in that scene? Um, yeah, we spoke a lot about the speech, and my only thing was I wanted it to be... Um I prefer Michael's writing than the history books. So uh, I just wanted some um, uh, something related to the children. Yeah, you put and, um, yeah, you put a line. In and um, uh, as always, Michael's objective was this was to get my uh, kids to come back and avenge me. So the religious stuff that I do say is because I know they're going to hear it one day, you know, and. I want them to believe in whatever they want to believe in, and if I have to do that, I'm dying anyway, it doesn't matter, you know. <laughs> but um, yeah, it was really motivate my children, because they wouldn't come with me when I was alive, and it was to motivate my kids. It's like, yeah, I was king of the Vikings once, and, um, and that whole speech is, because I know that they'll hear it, somebody will pass it to them one day, and, and it worked, it was Ragnar's last little His last uh, sort of conquer. strategy, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
Michael, uh, you were kind of saying before that you were actually on set that day yeah. uh, during the filming of it. Um, you were sort of saying how the weather and everything really kind of came together, but uh, what was it sort of like watching Travis as he was sort of hanging up there? I mean, I, I have to imagine that just, you know, having written the scene and, and seeing it perform, there must have been a lot of, as you were saying, like a lot of emotions kind of flying through at well, that point. I, I knew I speak it. My mic was on. I had a lot of words with Michael that day between lines. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. All these lines of speech yeah. again. God damn. Fucking hate Michael Hurst. <laughs> Fucking hate, Fucking hate yeah. him. Yeah. You didn't. And then you throw in, oh shit, my mic's on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so he was up there for, I don't know, you know, an hour and a half, yeah. okay, and, and he was sort of spitting these lines out, and, and some kind soul went up to the director and said, look, Let's bring him down. Can we bring him down? You know, get him in some dry clothes, give him a cup of tea. And the director said, No. He said, We would never get this performance again. It's brilliant. You know, it's fantastic. <laughs> and, and actually, what's true about that, okay, so think about it in a different way. If, you know, I'd quoted the speech, Ragnar's actual speech, which is, I wrote that down initially in the, in the script. And if Travis had said and didn't care, and had said, I'll do that. You would have got the speech, but you wouldn't have got the emotion. You know, there had to be something he was fighting against. There had to be something that made it, for him, a deeply emotional, meaningful uh, speech. And uh, so it was very good. It was good that he objected. It was good he fought against me. It was fantastic. Um, Travis, uh, that scene of Ragnar finally being in the snake pit, um, there's just that, that moment where he seems to still be fighting it and then seems to be kind of letting go. I mean, like, a, what to you, what's kind of going through Ragnar's mind in those final moments? Is, oh. there, is there any kind of peace? Is it still that sort of ongoing war? I mean, like, what's, wh wh where's his head at as, as he's sort of dying in that moment? Snakes actually poop a lot, so... <laughs> oh, I was. The little fellas would bite me and that, but I could this smell all around me. And, uh, How long were you in there for? Oh, a fair while. Yeah, a fair while. But, um, Do you lot really want to be actors? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> First they hang you up in a cage and then they throw you in a snake pit. Yeah, that, yeah, and that snake pit was actually the very last scene I ever shot. It was in the studio and, uh, and uh, yeah, as I said, it just felt right. And uh, I was so privileged to have a writer like Michael to, uh, to write. You know, on a show that uh, I was on for four years, and um, it was an amazing experience. What's your guys' interpretation? Because as much as, you know, this final episode with Ragnar, you know, there's what happens and there's what's kind of happening within himself. And throughout the whole show, as much as he's been, you know, kind of conquering and fighting wars and everything, there's been this really interesting struggle within himself. And it's been spiritual. It's been, you know, joining Christianity and what that's kind of done to him. I mean, Michael, in that, what's your interpretation of, like, what does he believe in the end? Or, or is, is there any kind of belief? Like, does he think he's going anywhere after this? Um, you know, it's, 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 um, it's not possible to, to, to answer that definitively because it was an organic process of, of the character going through so many experiences, extreme experiences of not wanting uh, power, but having to take power to do what he really wanted to, to do. Um, and, and, and having, and we all evolve uh, our attitudes, sometimes our beliefs are put under pressure. Um, so it would be very easy to say, well, he'd become an, uh, uh, you know, a pagan atheist by then, but that would be far too simplistic. Uh, like all of us, it's uh, a rich pattern, uh, f probably full of contradictions. And, uh, I, you know, for me, of course, what he actually, his, his last, that last speech was a sign of great nobility that someone could, when you're dying, say something that you didn't probably believe, but you knew your kids and your people believed it. That was fantastic. That was very moving. 
Uh, as, as great as this epi episode is, uh, one thing I always remember from this past season is the previous episode, which most yeah. of it just kind of plays out, Travis, as a, a really long sequence between you and uh, Linus Roach, who of course plays a uh, King Eckbert. Um, you know, to me, that's just like the real core of the show, and in, in, in some ways, for so long, was those two people. What was it like, sort of working on those very long, and you know, just just you two guys kind of in a in a in a, a room together? Uh, like, I, I imagine that had to have been like kind of interesting, sort of playing off of Linus that way. Yeah, Linus was actually meant to be here today, but he couldn't because he's working, but he's such a talented actor and uh, such a nice fella. And I think they were the uh, most enjoyable scenes I've done on the whole show. It was good just to sit down and have a conversation like I used to with uh, Athelstan, you know, and his um, position in life was very similar. I think he understood me more than my kids, my ex-wife, anyone. And uh, I suppose that's a lot in real life, you know. You could live a whole different life, different religion, li live in a different country, but uh, human beings are go through the same stuff, you know. Yeah, I think that's true, that it's th this was ultimately a very human encounter between people from very different cultures and very different religions, very different backgrounds, who could still connect at a very deep, level so so that's an incredibly kind of positive message in a way <clears throat> but those two episodes should be seen as one uh you know because uh, uh Eckbert is Pontius Pilate you know he has to uh cruci crucify this sort of slightly Christ-like figure and uh, there are just historical echoes and parallels and that I that I love digging into I want to go back a little bit, Michael, and talk about uh, when you were initially working on the first season of, of Vikings. Um, talk to me about like initially working with Travis and sort of finding Ragnar. I mean, did you conceive at that time that we would see this character, as you said, just move through so many stages of, of his life? I mean, that, 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 I mean, that to me is almost the, the real ambition of the show, more so than some of the admittedly epic-sized battle scenes, is kind of seeing this character age that way. Well, I always, um, right from the start, I decided that it was, it was going to be a family saga, that it was going to be a Ragnar and his sons. Um, and that was a good way uh, into the Viking world. You know, who, who knew that, that you know, uh, husbands loved wives and, and they loved their children and, hey, you know, they were human beings. Um, but I didn't, the thing about uh, long form drama and TV drama, I mean, you don't know at the end of a season whether it's gonna be picked up again. So part of you is kind of thinking, well, that this might be it. You know, which is why in the initial outline, Ragnar died in there. Uh, but I mean, uh, after two or three episodes, I, I knew that wasn't gonna happen. And, and I, I just prayed, you know, that it would find an audience and, and that we'd be able to go on because this guy, was giving me so much and in some senses he was giving me so much by giving me less because I've never known an actor to come so regularly to the writer and say can you cut my lines please <laughs> <laughs> you know I don't do speeches <laughs> give that line to him you know <laughs> she could have that one I don't need to say anything <laughs> and, and if you think about if you think about the show I think if you think about the show, think about it, look back at it in your mind, I think almost the presiding image you will get is of Travis's face and his eyes, and he doesn't need to say anything, and it's all there. Yeah, all right. <laughs> so Travis, that was, that was your main note, was less, less, less dialogue, less speech. <laughs> The first day I said that was pretty tough. You're going up to a writer and saying, I don't want to say... <laughs> 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 that was great. And uh, Michael, so there's so many brave choices in our show. And Michael, is, well, I don't know what episode it was, but there's one when... Um, I think it was the end of... Season two. Season two. <laughs> and I went up. I didn't want to sound too dumb, which I often do. But I went up to Michael and said, what do you reckon, buddy? If uh, I don't say nothing but the prayer. The Lord's Prayer. The Lord's Prayer in this whole episode. And I know it's a finale or whatever season. And Michael 
And he's like, <laughs> yeah, just don't tell no one. <laughs> yeah, that's it. And um, let's see if they notice. Yes. <laughs> Got away with it. Where are they? <laughs> yeah, but um, I'm. I think uh, it was such a great opportunity for me to. Uh, the world is so expressive there, and um, I think uh, as a king and people that uh, have to do a lot of thinking, um, I think it's much better to say less. And, and you never know where he's going to write to. So there's a lot of the stuff, especially the first season, there's a lot of um, just acted like I had a plan because I had no idea what Mark was going to write. But it was sort of that look where it's like, is he up to something? Is he not? <laughs> yeah. And then he'd write something, yeah, I was thinking that the whole time. <laughs> You're sort of like having to play, like you know the strategy like, uh, ahead of time. That's an interesting headspace yeah, to be I in. I always acted like I had a plan, even though I had no bloody idea. What <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you have any kind of like favorite moments like with Ragnar in the show that were you know, fun, fun to perform, either, either, either silent or, or uh, otherwise? Any, uh, any, any dialogue or dialogue-free moments? Um... Well, uh, the funniest stuff was always when everybody had to get on a horse, <laughs> to be honest, or, and had to be helped up on a horse <laughs> for their heroic shots. Um, we had so much fun. The crew is just so talented. I always say that we wouldn't have made it to season two if it wasn't for the Irish crew and their abilities and, and, and the bang for the buck. And uh, one, of, one of my favorite scenes is when uh, and it's, I think it's in the first season is, is when Ragnar's on the beach talking to his dead daughter. Oh, that's amazing. Uh, amazingly written. Uh, uh, well, uh, I, 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 have ki- I have daughters, I have kids, I thought of them, you know, and, yeah. and, and you did it so brilliantly. Yeah, thank you. Oh, that's very and that was a speech, so some speeches are good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, still don't. Uh, I'm going to... A fluke that it worked out all right, but um, yeah, no, it's, it, when it's amazing writing, it's so much easier, you know, there's stuff where some of Michael's writing, it could be a full page of dialogue, and um, it's so easy to learn, and then other writing that's not as good, it can be uh, like a sentence, and I don't know why, I just cannot remember it, because it's dopey or something. Mm. Well, that, that actually leads into, uh, I do want to uh, take some questions. We had the audience uh, pre-write some here. This question is from Ann. It's for Michael, but maybe Travis can uh, pitch in. Michael, do you expect actors to be word perfect to what you've written? <laughs> uh, I tried. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I guess the answer is yes, in, in the sense of it, 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 we're all professionals, okay? So I, I, I've got a timelines, I've got to you know, write stuff, and, and if I don't write it, then it can't be, you know, it can't be done at all. And then the actors, it, it's such a high-pressured um, activity. I mean, we're doing four scenes a day, there's, there's no time. Um, and if people have got issues, if actors have got issues about lines, really they have to reckon, they have to do something about that before the day that they're supposed to to, to say it. Um, so I, I guess yes, in a, in a way. Travis, do you have any do you have any comments on that? I tried, man. <laughs> <laughs> no disrespect. I'm just, remembering stuff is not my. Uh, Best quality. <laughs> but, uh, there is, there's a, there, you know, um, there is this, I, I have a, a very good friend who's a, a film director, and I, I, you know, I was telling him one day about d- d- talking to the cast and, and, and they might want to change things, and he was just, he's 86 now, you know, so he was making movies in the 60s and 70s, and he was just looking at me and like, complete, but what do you mean you talk to the actors? <laughs> Well, the actors, you give them the script and they act the script. That's what acting is. <laughs> and, and it's also, what do you mean? You don't get, why, you know, why would you do that? It's absolutely crazy. Um, and he said, the other thing is that it, it should feel like it's the first time they've said it because it's real. 
That's what they're saying, you know. Um, it's not something you've rehearsed and you've, you've, you know, it's actually just come out of their mouths. See, that's why know. I couldn't remember the lines. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no rehearsal. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, that's, uh, you know, that's to take it to extremes. I actually like collaborating. I want to, to have uh, a conversation with, uh, with the actors, but, um, you know. I've never worked with somebody so collaborative. Is Michael as uh, probably my favourite thing about the whole show, other than money. But <laughs> 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 no, but it is. I, I so appreciate that, Michael, and uh, it was an amazing experience. And uh, most of that is because of the uh, collaboration. Just kind of uh, on that note of collaboration. I mean, like, is there anything particular, either kind of plot related or character specific to Ragnar that you guys kind of recall really coming about from that back and forth? Like any specific scene, or even just anything that kind of came about with the character? Over well, the time? Michael, I think uh, Ragnar <laughs> should uh, have another drink, Mike. Uh, no. no, I'm joking. We didn't drink on set. <laughs> but I, I think the whole four years was. Um, uh, things changed all the time, and. Uh, we uh, we had such a great relationship, and um, it's amazing that Michael writes every single episode. I mean, dude, <laughs> but it's uh, just tremendous. He's written every single one himself. Well, it 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 kind of um, it it was more than a collaboration in in a sense. It was it became a a. a, a process you know we were living it we were living it so um, it, it just it, it became a deep relationship you know I mean I also have deep inverted commas relationships with with the, the directors but they're only on for like two episodes or, or, or possibly three episodes but uh, you know I was living with Ragnar in my study in my head on set with him, you know, this was someone who was very real, very, a very big part of my daily existence for over four years, you know. Um, kind of uh, along those lines, here's a question from Judy uh, for Travis. Travis, were you personally affected by your final scene of torture and death? Well, I didn't die, but I got a pretty good cold. <laughs> <laughs> Did you actually did you actually get get sick after that after being held yeah, held aloft in the rain? Got a bit of a man flu, but um, uh, no, I, it felt right. I was really sad just because you spent everybody's like a family there. You spend four years with them, with the crew and all the Irish and uh, and uh, I don't. There's not a job in the world that you meet so many people and spend so much time with people, you know. I, I don't know what, what other job you go and you meet uh, whatever, 300. I think there's been 700 people work on the show at uh, one point. Um, and there's not a job where you get to meet so many people and spend so much time. With you know, such intensity. As yeah, well. yeah, yeah. And it's like you spend more time than your family or, or any of that, you know. You spend more time with people on set. Uh, Michael, here's a question for you from Connor Skiffick. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, do you have any advice that you would give to your younger writer self? Um, I wish I could think of something witty, but I <laughs> Travis, no. do you have any advice that you'd give to uh, Michael's younger writer self? Yeah. <laughs> Don't write so many speeches. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're going to make it one day, kid. <laughs> yeah. Every I wanted, young writer needs to hear that. I, I wanted to be a soccer player, you know. So, uh, fortunately, my son is now a professional soccer player. So, he's, he's living the dream. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, let's give it up for his <laughs> for soccer playing Horatio. son. <laughs> he's, a, he's a professional soccer player. Uh, and uh, same, uh, same question asker, uh, what is your process for writing period dialogue? Um, well, actually with Vikings, I did feel that I needed to find a, a rhythm to the dialogue. And uh, someone sent me uh, a novel by an Icelandic writer during this whole process when I was thinking about it. And although the novel was set in, I think, 17th century Iceland, 
the rhythms of the dialogue in this in this novel reminded me of the rhythms of the sagas. When you read the sagas, there's a certain music to them, a way they constructed. So I use those rhythms uh, because I thought Icelandic society is is really the last great Viking. It's still very Viking uh, culture in Iceland, and I thought that was the the, the closest that uh, that I could get to because uh, there's obviously no, no recorded uh, version of Viking uh, of Viking speaking, um, and how the the other thing that happened was, of course, people. Uh, we had actors from Canada, from Ireland, from England, from all over the place, from Scandinavia. And uh, so they said, how are they going to speak? How do they speak English? You know, they're Vikings, they're speaking English. How's that going to sound? And we had, uh, the first two episodes were shot by um, a Swedish director called jo Johan Renk, and uh, who speaks very, very good English, but with a Swedish accent. I said, speak like Johan Renk. So everyone... <laughs> So we have we have lots of Johan Ranks running around. The Just kept saying action, action. <laughs> <laughs> Did you kind of have to like nail down that that sort of specific dialect pretty quickly? Then Travis, that kind of particular accent that uh, you guys were using the first couple episodes. Yeah, um, I, I probably didn't do it the best, but it's lucky because I was sort of one of the main characters. So I'm just like, guys, you just got to sound like me. <laughs> we're, we're in this together. <laughs> you know, so whatever came out of my mouth, everybody. The, f the first raid by Australian Vikings. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, here's a question. Oh, sorry. This question is for Ragnar Lothbrok. Uh, what sort of preparation, I assume it's for you, Travis, what sort of preparation did you do to play the legendary Viking? What did you do to stay in character? Did you research the mythology or the belief system? Um, uh, to be honest, Michael was my uh, encyclopedia and the scripts were so detailed. Uh, uh, I think as an actor, my main thing is just to make um, the character relatable. You know, no matter where you're from, you got your family. Uh, you got the issues within the family. You got your children. He definitely has issues with his family. That's that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, very misunderstood. <laughs> <laughs> Good old boy. Um, Troubled, sensitive, poetic. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Scared of love. <laughs> Lonely. <laughs> Single. <laughs> um. Yeah, it was just to make the character personal. We did some pretty horrendous things, uh, the Vikings did. So it's just, it's hard to make sometimes uh, uh, people that do such bad things to make an audience follow them, you know? And uh, the way Michael looked at it as a family saga, I think that uh, really worked, you know? Um, and of course, in, in the last episode, there's the moment between uh, you and Alex, uh, who, who, who plays Ivar, which I feel like that really comes to the fore there, the, the idea of this as a, a kind of a family saga. I mean, in that scene, that's really him saying goodbye to his, his family. I mean, like, do you kind of feel like, is he, is he giving, I, I guess one thing I should ask is, is, is he giving Ivar good advice in, in that scene? Like, is he actually kind of, kind of helping him in some way? Is that kind of him making good with a character who he had initially wanted to leave in the woods? Uh, many years ago. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, well, M Michael and I spoke about that early on, and, and we spoke about taking. I was such an amazing character, you know. The legend of Ivar is so amazing. This guy that can't walk, that goes into battles, and um, uh, uh, oh, we spoke about how important he's going to be to the future of the show, and. Um, I really wanted to go with him on the trip and um, try to right my wrongs. I did it with the other sons in weird ways, in Ragnar ways. I settled things with Lagatha, with Aslog, with Bjorn. And um, the one kid that I didn't spend much time with was Ivar. And um, that, that, that kid's um, Alex is a great, great actor. And um, it was great to do scenes with him and, and set up, or help set up part of the future of the show and for uh, the wasn't Viking race. Wasn't that a beautiful scene when he was sitting on the, the throne talking about his childhood and what you'd meant to him? And, and uh, do you remember that? It was. Uh, I never watched the show. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen it. 
Is it, is that it the... was a beautiful scene, it really <laughs> And you were in it. Yeah. I know, no, yeah. Yeah, no, it, <laughs> it was great. I really enjoyed the scenes with him too because it was so different, you know, and, and it sort of, I don't think Michael figured that in season one that no. we were going to do no. this journey and then it worked out so good because he was a kid that I did leave under a tree because I thought it was better for him and... Um, and to be honest, a lot of the characters who would take over for the Vikings in a way. I mean, I think I was too, uh, maybe too trusting in some people. That's where my leadership went away. Or, and and um, I think Alex has got that. If you really want to conquer something, you need half a brain and a lot of mongrel, sort of. A lot of hate is where that speech come from. Um, just taking no prisoners. I tried to be friends with people and I got messed over. Right, I just tried yeah. to be friends with people. That, that was his only mistake, really. Yeah, just good old boy. <laughs> <laughs> Scared of love. <laughs> uh, Michael, this is a question for you from Oscar. Uh, what do you do for writer's block? Uh, I can't afford to have writer's block. <laughs> What is, uh, I mean, right now, Michael, you are at, is it 70 episodes and counting of, of Vikings? Um, what is your kind of procedure when you're approaching a new season? Do you kind of outline it ahead of time and then hit it one by one? Like, what does that kind of schedule look like? Um, I'm still blown away that you wrote 20 episodes this past season, by the way. <laughs> well, uh, first of all, I go into the fields opposite my house and scream. And, and, and this really helps me, you know, it gets me into that. You live on a beach in a beautiful spot where there's a field there. <laughs> <laughs> he gets in his that's speedos a, that's and goes for house. a swim. That's another house. Oh, okay. So, oh, the one in uh, England, sorry. <laughs> so first, first you go in the field, you scream. Yeah. How long are you screaming for? Is it, is it a couple days? Well, inside <laughs> for a long time. Um, no, I, I, you know, that's... Uh, uh, what I have to say really is is that it's it's been a uh, continuous pleasure and joy to write the show otherwise I wouldn't do it because it does take quite a bit out of me and it you know and I, I sacrifice many other things to the to the show my children my wife my dog everything you know it's like <laughs> uh, my life um, but I, I I love it I mean I go into my office and and, and I'm with these uh, characters, uh, they're, they're living people to me, and I go in there now to find out what they've been up to, you know, uh, I've got a historical consultant who <laughs> feeds me lots of information and I, you know, uh, which is very important and the reality is very important to me and the research and it's very important, but then I have to take my characters for a walk, you know, and uh, um, and I'm lucky that, uh, you know, I can kill them off if I want to. Uh, you know, <laughs> I can refresh them. Uh, so, you know, it's not like I don't have a, a, a system per se, you know. I just write... I'm sure History up. Channel loves that, no, by, by the way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but, you know. I think uh, it's so difficult for anybody to get an hour of what they wrote on TV. You know, writers that have been doing it their whole lives. Oh man, I got, I got an episode on TV. To write 70 is just a bit mental, to yeah. be honest. Yeah. <laughs> no. no, it's amazing. And it's such good quality. Um, Look, this isn't about me, it's about you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Travis, uh, another question for you from the audience. Uh, did you have prior training to the show? If so, what kind was it? That might be about martial arts training, but in, in general, like, a, a, had you had any kind of training as, a, as an actor or a, as a performer? Uh, yeah, I'm certainly show? not a natural, you know, but um, I don't know, the way I grew up uh, was always try to work harder than everybody else and more opportunity would come. I was in acting class for years, Ivana Chabik, and um, she's an amazing teacher. Mm -hmm. I know. And um, yeah, when it came to the physical stuff, I had a good stunt guy. You know, <laughs> I I'm too old to care about looking cool. You, you know, but we had an amazing stunt team over there. They did a tremendous job, especially once again with, we haven't got the biggest budget, but history's working on it. 
Um, yeah, once again, it's such a team effort and everybody makes you look good, you know. The set people make you look good. The clothing, the writer makes you look good. The rainy weather makes the show look better. Um, it all adds in, yeah, I'd, anywhere else the show would not be a quarter of a good, as good as it is because we shot in Ireland with that team. It's been uh, over a year now since you filmed that last episode uh, of, of your time on, on Vikings. I mean, like, uh, do, do you miss Ragnar? Do you miss kind of playing the character? I mean, like, obviously it's, 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 it's been a long time, but I have to imagine that you, pl you played the character for, for a very long time there. Yeah, you get used to it, you know? Um, like a girl, you get used to what they like or whatever. <laughs> and <laughs> I don't know what that was. But <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> no wonder you killed me, Michael. He's getting uh, tired. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, you, you certainly get used to play the uh, character and it, uh, it becomes a little easier and that's why you put so much pressure on Michael to give you flaws and to, um, and to keep everything fresh. You know, but yeah, I, I miss Ragnar, I miss all the people. I, uh, I um, miss the free food. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'd be intrigued to know, because I'm guessing a lot of people in this audience would wonder this. Uh, do you have any, you know, any, any advice, you know, could be the most general advice possible just for, for, for a younger actor who's kind of, you know, just starting out right now? I'm the worst person in the world to ask that. Um, <laughs> for a start, don't do it. <laughs> no, uh, it's the same thing, work harder than everybody. Um, everybody says there's casting directors and that nine out of ten people will go into a room and do exactly the same thing so for me I want to work with a director that does the one is it one person out of ten that has a different take do something different and as an actor I've always um, tried to go not, uh, not against it but just play it in a way that um, it's not so obvious or that you'd expect I mean, uh, same as anyway, you stand out if you're different, you know, and and it's amazing that it doesn't matter where you're from, an actor can play, actors play, a lot of actors play the line exactly the same way or act exactly the same way. It's just a natural thing. It, I think it's from watching movies, you know, it's like even people make decisions in their life from watching movies. Oh, that's what love is or, oh, that's what you do when you're really angry or, and um, I've always just tried to go the opposite. So, so watch, watch less movies, ask for less dialogue, would also be another good piece of advice. <laughs> no, just uh, uh, class is the best thing. It's like any sport, you know, or going to the gym or whatever. The more you do it, the, the better you get and try to um, surround yourself with people that you like their work or you respect them, you know. Michael, uh, I'd be kind of intrigued to know, you were kind of saying earlier that it still makes you emotional thinking about Ragnar, and you, know, you were saying that you'd lived with the character for so long. I mean, you've obviously moved, the show has moved on into this interesting new era, but how do you feel now kind of looking back on this episode, on the episode that sort of ends Ragnar's journey on, uh, in the show? I think these two episodes, uh, 14 and 15 together, are still probably the best two episodes that we shot. So, so you're gonna bring so so, tra so Ragnar's is, is is coming back to life then is that yeah. <laughs> Ragnar? My agents just yeah. said <laughs> Ragnar doesn't ever go away from the show. His sons reference him all the time and embody him and talk about his legacy, and some of them try to to uh, create what what he was his dream. Uh, Ragnar, you know, the thing about Vikings, well, the most important things to Vikings was fame, which is a different thing from celebrity. Fame was doing something remarkable that they could talk about in the hall in winter around the fire, that these, uh, you know, almost godlike uh, people, uh, which, and there are sagas about Ragnar Lothbrok, 
So uh, in the world of Vikings, in my saga of, of, of the Vikings, Ragnar is always present and will always be uh, referenced, referred to, remembered, uh, you know, so I'm still writing about him. Uh, Travis, you, 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 you may have to start watching the show now. It sounds pretty good, actually. <laughs> <laughs> No, I've always watched his show. You're not, I'm not in every scene, so I, I love seeing what the other actors do. And, um, you know, and, and like I said, as a family, I really enjoy it. It's like watching your brother act or your sister act. And, um, yeah, I've watched them all. I just don't like watching myself. Is that right? You, you like watching yourself on, on, yeah, on no, screen? No, like, not at all. What do you guys no. think? Do you like watching him on screen? Thank you. That's very nice. <laughs> uh, well, Michael, you were kind of talking about Vikings achieving fame with something great. Uh, it's fair to say this episode, I think it just sticks in everyone's mind so, so much. The writing of it, the performance of it. Uh, such an honor to be here to celebrate this episode and you two guys. Uh, everyone, please put your hands together one more time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.